This is Brent of the Brookbush Institute, and in this video we're going to go over two special tests for the knee, the anterior drawer, and the Lachman's test for ACL injury. I'm going to have my friend Melissa come out. She's going to help me demonstrate these two tests. Now, these two tests make a lot of sense. They're fairly easy to do. The Lachman's test is more reliable, and we'll come back to that here in a second in this video. But essentially what we're going to try to do is we're going to see if we could move Melissa's tibia anterior because we know that one of the primary jobs of the ACL is to prevent that. Now the way we're going to make that happen if I'm doing the anterior drawer test is to set her knee up at 90 degrees, sit on Melissa's foot, I'm going to wrap my hands around the back of her tibia and then I'm just going to pull this way. I'm going to create a posterior to anterior force on her tibia and if she has an ACL, her ACL should stop me. If she doesn't, and I can feel this by putting my fingers, my thumbs over the joint line right here, if she doesn't, I'll get a bunch of anterior motion and it, it, it'll feel a little funky to me. And especially if you guys have been doing this for a while, you know what a knee's supposed to feel like? You get somebody without an ACL and it's like whoop, and you're like, oh, oh that's, that's not natural. Now the anterior drawer is the more common of the two tests, so it's important that you're aware of this test when you see positive anterior drawer on a case study or when you see positive anterior drawer on some sort of uh, physician's assessment coming into your office. Important that you know what this is, but this is actually the less reliable of the two tests. Lachman's test is a little bit more reliable and here's what that looks like. You're actually going to go down to 30 degrees, so now the foot isn't flat. You're going to stabilize the femur with this hand and you're going to wrap your other hand around the back of their tibia, but same thing. You're just going to pull the tibia this way. And Melissa has a nice firm feel there. I'm not getting any anterior motion. Now if I had to guess, the reason why this is less reliable than this is actually the one thing that uh, affects reliability on both tests, which is this false negative that you can get. You will have the individual who you go to pull and they guard so bad, specifically by contracting their hamstring muscles. And if you think of the directions that the hamstrings pull, your hamstrings can kind of pretend to be an ACL. So you go to pull, their hamstrings gear up, and you get what you think is a normal end feel. I would imagine that's a lot easier for somebody to do in the anterior drawer test than the Lachman's test, which actually takes away some of the mechanical advantage of the hamstrings. The other thing I would do with this test, guys, is make sure that if you think you get a positive on this test, you compare it to the other knee. If somebody guards on one of these two tests, you may still be able to feel a difference because the uninjured side will still feel much stiffer than the injured side. So you don't necessarily have to get this super clear, perfect positive, make sure your patient is totally cooperative and somehow shuts down any guarding mechanism they have. That's not as necessary, providing that you go, okay, I'm gonna do my Lachman's test, that feels pretty firm to me, but just to be sure, let me walk around the table and do the other side. So there you guys have it. Two super easy tests, two fairly reliable tests, and watch for the one thing that could knock your reliability down a little bit, which is that false negative. Make sure you test both sides. If you have any questions about these, leave a comment below.